This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Before I start, I know that somebody is gonna ask about the brush and I'm gonna be using Bear Brush from my Brushes for Painters set and that's the paint brush that I'm using for the entire painting. Okay, let's get on with the art. Now that most of you know what it's like to work from home, I'm sure some of you have been thinking what it would be like to just quit your job and work full-time as a freelance artist. If you can work for some boss in some company, how different would it really be to do that work and be your own boss and manage your own clients? I have been working full-time in different companies for most of my own work life. During last summer, after my summer vacation, the department that I was working in, all of the people working there got fired at the same time. So that was a bit of a shock and I needed a new plan on what to do with my life after that point. My first instinct in all of that panic was to just gather my portfolio and send it to as many people as humanly possible. And I did gather a new portfolio made out of my recent paintings and I did that actually in under two hours. I got it really quickly together and I was ready to send it to absolutely everywhere. Except I didn't. In fact, nobody saw the content of that portfolio ever because I never sent it to anyone ever after I got fired. I chose this hard path of going freelance instead. And that was a huge process. So I think it's better to unpack what was behind that huge decision. I want to clarify that even though I made my portfolio and I was ready to send out all those applications, this wasn't a sudden decision to go freelance. In fact, this had been my plan for many years already. I just never thought that this would be the actual moment when it happened. And when I had that portfolio, I just had that moment that like now I have an opportunity to give this a go or I can just apply for another job and everything will go on as normal. I already had the experience of like working in different companies, but my skill and expertise is graphic design and illustration. And I thought that if I work as an illustrator full time, making freelance artwork for different clients, those skills don't really go anywhere, even though it would leave a gap in my CV. In this industry, nobody really looks at your CV ever. They just look at your portfolio and if your illustrations or designs are good enough, then you get the job. So I was pretty confident that that skill wouldn't go anywhere even if this wouldn't work out at all. So that's why I chose freelance. But it wasn't a sudden decision. This had been a long time coming and I had set up my entire life and my entire online presence in a way that made that possible. So it wasn't like a sudden <laughs> quick snap decision. But I want to be brutally honest here. I had the exact same fears that you might have about going freelance. And I don't want this to be one of those videos where I just tell you to quit your job and just do it. Because it's not easy, it's incredibly challenging and it can be very financially risky. So I want everybody to make this decision for themselves, considering everything that is going on in your life and if it's feasible for you. And as hard as this is to admit, if I had been able to keep my old job for a few more years, I would have probably stayed with it because of the financial comfort and the scariness of going freelance. So I just want to put that out there so that nobody gives me the kind of credit that I totally don't deserve. If this is something that you're thinking of doing in the future, the reasons why you shouldn't do it are pretty obvious and we have to talk about money here. Art is not, nor has it ever been, ever in the history of humanity, the most lucrative business. It's just not. I'm sure there are exceptions, but for most of us, art is not a business of easy money, not in any sense of the word. Getting a steady stream of income as an artist is not something that is very likely to happen to many of us. And I just want everybody to be very aware of that so that whatever decisions you make, that those are based on testing and facts. 
and it shouldn't be an emotions-based decision when it comes to how you get by, how you buy food or pay your rent. I think those are all more important things and that doesn't mean that you can't do art, but art can always be a side hustle, it can be a hobby, it can be all of those things. So this isn't a black and white decision. I can tell from first-hand experience how stressful it is to have several bad months in a row and then you're just constantly thinking about if you're gonna run out of cash and that can be really stressful. If that kind of stress sounds like it's not worth it, then going freelance won't improve the quality of your life. But I also have to highlight this fact that being employed full-time has that feeling of safety when you get the same amount of money every month. But that was the situation that I was in and the decision to fire me was in no way under my control. So it might seem like I have more control over my life when I have a full-time salary, but at the same time, you never know what is happening with the company that you are working in, especially as an artist. You are always quite replaceable by somebody who is cheaper or just paints in a way that is more appealing to whoever is doing the hiring decisions in that company. Or they might choose to like fire all of the artists anyway and go with freelancers. And that's a decision that you have no control over. So I don't want to say that being employed full-time has more safety in it, because it might seem more safe, but at the same time you don't have control over your employment. Things could happen. You could lose your job and be in this situation anyway. As a freelancer, if you are in a situation where you are not making enough income at some point, there are some things that you can do about it. For example, you can take on more clients or you can make, for example, digital products to sell online. Making money in those ways can still have or probably has an element of luck because you still need to have an audience, you need to have the algorithm on your side so you have enough visibility and marketing. You need luck as a freelancer as well, but there is still more control because it's you who is making all those decisions to make those products or to have those clients. Even if you need luck, you still have more control over your daily tasks than in any company. Because in most companies, you might have several different bosses. You might have middle management for middle management and the choices what you need to do with your time during that day might come up from above and you don't even know who sent that assignment to you. If anyone at your workplace has ever said that they said that it has to be done this way, then you have encountered the invisible army. They will always have some kind of a say in how your day goes. That invisible army hides between you and the layers of hierarchy that are all above your pay grade. And when somebody comes to your desk and says that they said that this is not good enough, you can't negotiate with people that don't even have names. I know that it might seem from this video that going freelance has been the biggest change in my work life, but honestly, that's not the case. When I decided to quit as a concept artist around 2018, that was pretty much the biggest decision in my entire life, not just work-wise. I really did like being a concept artist. I love visual problem solving and I love being able to design all kinds of different things and work in different styles. But slowly over the years, over a decade, a different side of that job started to show up to me and it made me eventually change my mind. Even if my art and designs were part of all the projects that I was working on, I started to get this weird feeling that nobody actually knew what I was doing in all of these projects. And that feeling kept expanding over time. Like, I felt like nobody knew where I was, nobody knew what I was doing in that company, and nobody knew who I was. Back when I was an art student, I could see all the different art students and we could kind of like publish our work all the time. But when you work in a game company, all of your work kind of gets hidden by NDAs and you end up making 
dozens and dozens, I mean hundreds of painting that just a few people will ever see. And eventually that made me feel like nobody actually saw me at all either. And this might seem like a selfish thought, but I'm not ashamed to say that I felt like I really wanted to be seen after all that time. I wanted to be able to publish my own art and not have some sort of a producer say if it can be published or not, or some other people say that I need to tweak this or do it this other way. I just wanted to have my art be shown after it's done without any sort of censorship in between. And I wanted to have all of my own ideas and designs kind of like visible to other people without any sort of like filter in between. And honestly, I just wanted to be seen. I remember very distinctly thinking that I want other people to know that I exist. And at that time I was also very lonely, so I didn't feel like I get to connect with other people through my art at all. Now, when I paint something on my own, like this painting for example, I can just publish it on my own. And this is honestly one of the main reasons why I decided already back then that I want to start working towards becoming a freelance artist. I knew that I couldn't make that jump back then, but I started the process of working towards this moment way back then. But I just didn't know that it would happen all this quickly. The one cool thing about this whole art and illustration thing is that it's quite easy to test the waters and see what it would be like to be a freelancer. Even if you currently have a full-time job, you can test freelancing as a side hustle without losing your current job or making any big decisions without having more information. Just taking on a few clients lets you see if it's something you actually enjoy more or if art is something that you enjoy more as a hobby. And there's nothing wrong with having art as just a hobby. I think just is a wrong word to use here. Having art as a hobby, that doesn't change the value of your art in any way. Your art is still important and having that kind of creativity in your life can improve the quality of your life greatly, even if it's not the main source of income at that moment. Now, if you're testing freelancing as a side hustle with your main job, there's one tip that I think is very important to bring up here. And this is what I did. Calculate how many clients you could feasibly do in one month and also how much money you need in one month to survive. This way you can see how many clients you are able to do in one month in a way that would bring you full-time income. But at the same time, you have to leave out some empty space so that you can keep your social media presence visible and active during that time. So you can't dedicate all of your time to just client work. You have to keep marketing yourself. That's a really big part of the job. So making a plan out of those is something that you can do while working full-time. And when you are testing the waters by taking on a few clients, this might seem really awkward, but you can't charge side hustle money because then you don't know if people are willing to pay that higher price tag for your work that you would actually need if you started working freelance. Now, I fully understand that it might be really awkward to ask that much money because if you have a full-time job, you don't actually need it so it might seem like you're asking for a whole lot, but this is the only way that you can find out if this is something that you can do or if you need to keep working on your art and your online presence. By doing this, you'll easily see how much you need to charge for each commission. And when people are asking, what should I charge for commissions? This is the exact formula that you should apply. Unlike most videos like this on YouTube, I also really don't want anybody to just watch this video and quit their job immediately without making a financially responsible, well-informed decision. So this is something that you can find out on your own and please be responsible. But commissions aren't 
everything. There are many kinds of streams of income that you can build for yourself that don't require you working on them every day. If you like teaching, you can start a membership like this channel has, for example. You can start a YouTube channel and get a little bit of ad money from the ads. That's just a little bit of money though, but it's something. You can make digital products, sell prints or have sponsorships on your YouTube channel. Now let's switch awkwardly to the sponsored section of this video. No, actually Skillshare has a perfect class for this topic if you're thinking of going freelance. It's called Discovering Success. Seven exercises to uncover your purpose, passion and path. And it's by Emma Gannon. Now, if you remember from my previous videos, I have previously also suggested Emma Cannon's previous class. So please check out her entire library on Skillshare. When I saw that she has a new class, I immediately watched it because I had such a good experience with the previous one. When it comes to money, one of the things that Emma explains very well in this class is redefining your success because success might mean many different things to you and that might not involve money at all. For me personally a big part of success is creative freedom and connecting with you guys through these videos. I could get money from any normal job but the experience of making these videos and talking with you guys in the comment section that is something that is unique to this job that I'm doing right now. In the class by Emma Cannon, she has these questions that help you define your own success and what that means to you. And I think that's beneficial to anybody creative watching this. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions and get lost in creativity. Most classes are under 60 minutes, with short lessons to fit any schedule. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes, so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. The first thousand people who use the link in my description will receive a one month free trial to Skillshare Premium. So you can explore your creativity. One of the biggest hurdles for me in this big transition has been just all of the logistics surrounding it, especially taxes, which are really scary and also depending on the country that you live in, very expensive. I remember spending a really long time searching for information on what to actually do in this sort of a situation. Eventually I hired an accountant, which is also a running cost, but he made it all make sense to me, which was super helpful. So if you're on the fence about going freelance, you can just spend enough time on each topic and figure them out one by one. Don't try to absorb all the information at once or you will just feel really overwhelmed. Trust me, I was there and it was scary, but I realized that I only need to figure out one thing at a time and eventually things just start working little by little. And when you start, there are also a lot of moving elements and that can also feel really overwhelming. But I recommend that you keep asking yourself in each step that is this really worth all the trouble? And just be ready for any kind of honest and true answers that you come up with. Is this worth the trouble? If the answer is yes, then you know that you will just keep going. Whatever you eventually choose, I hope that it doesn't cost you your creativity. Because that's a real danger when you start mixing money with your art. For me personally, the reason why I wanted to give this freelancing a go is because I wanted to reconnect with my art and with my creativity. And I wanted to have this opportunity to paint all these paintings that any clients would never ask me to do. This painting would never have happened if I hadn't done all this work to carve out some space and time in my life to make it. And I can't measure the value of this painting in money. It means more to me than money. All these challenges that I had to overcome to make this painting happen, I, I would do all of that stuff all over again. 
just to be able to get to this point. And I'm grateful and I know that I'm lucky that all of these ideas kept waiting for me all those years. They kept waiting for me to be able to be in this position where I get to paint all these ideas and they just didn't leave. I know that for some people when they say no to creativity for long enough it will just leave. So I'm very lucky that I was able to keep the connection to my creativity and it has grown stronger over the past year, definitely. Now I would love to hear from you guys if freelancing is something that you have been thinking of doing in the future and if there are certain topics that you would like me to cover. For example, the way that I prepare for this freelancing transition, I think I had a really clear plan and if I had to do this again, I would do it the same way. So if you want, I could make a video out of that. If those steps are something that you want to repeat for yourself. Also for the members of this channel, there's a full layer breakdown of this painting. There's also a short live stream of me painting this painting and there's going to be a super long uh, extra commentary long form process video but that is like hours of video footage that I still need to go through so it's gonna take a few more days after publishing this video. Okay, I'm Mikko. I'll see you guys in the next video. Go and paint some stuff. Bye!